Chevrolet full-size trucks before and after they started calling them Silverados. For decades, they always had V8s and uh, six-cylinder engines in them. But in very, very recent years, Chevrolet decided to start offering a completely different powertrain in their full-size trucks, and we're gonna look at that today. This is a 2022, the second half of the year, so essentially the same as a 2023, Chevrolet Trail Boss Z71. And it has a powertrain that most people don't like. So your current generation Chevrolet Silverado can be optioned with four different engines. Of course, you have the big Duramax diesel. You also have a 6.2 liter V8, a 5.3 liter V8, and then you have what this thing has, the 2.7 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. Come on, haters, let's hear it. Come on, I can take it. I know what you think, let's check this thing out anyway. Hey folks, before we get started today, I wanna to give a special thanks to Twin City Certified of Maryville, Tennessee for allowing me to use this Chevrolet Trail Boss for today's review. When you get done here, make sure to check the description below for a link to the website. Send some traffic their way, come buy some cars from them, folks. They've been amazing. They've lent me several vehicles, including a couple C8 Corvettes. That's how great these people are. All right, back to the Trail Boss. But before we jump into the powertrain, let's talk about this truck itself. Now, what, like I said, again, this is a 2022 Chevrolet Silverado Trail Boss. Now, you, your Trail Boss comes in two different trim levels. You get the base model Custom, which has a lot less options than this. This is your LT, and it, this thing has been very nicely optioned. Of course, it is a Trail Boss. It is also a Z71. So let's walk around the thing and talk about what makes this thing what it is. So first of all, you're gonna notice it's a nice big full crew cab big four big doors fits six people inside and i'll show you how in a minute it's a very nice looking truck i mean from the outside looking at this thing regardless of the powertrain this is a good looking truck i like the way these look anyways what makes this thing a trail boss well if you look here in your wheel wedge you're gonna see a lot a lot of space between the tire and the, and the wheel well. The Trail Boss comes from the factory with two additional inches of ground clearance over your standard Silverado four-wheel drive. And underneath, you're gonna see these Rancho monotube shocks from the factory. You can see here, this one is specced with the standard 18-inch black aluminum wheels. And it's currently sitting on these Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires, which have a pretty decent aggressive tread pattern because once again, this is an off-road vehicle. Run down the side, you can see this thing's got some nice running boards on it. Nice, tough, tubular running boards. Gonna need those to get up in this thing because it is higher up in the air. You can see now the Z71 designation, or if it was to say Silverado or anything like that, is up here on the fender instead of on the doors like in previous years. Come around to the front, let's look at this hood. It's got this big hood bulge right here. It looks very aggressive and kind of sporty. Coming down from that, you see you've got some LED projector headlights, some LED high beams in the middle, and some LED running lights, which my GoPro hates. Coming to the other side, you're gonna see that when you hit the turn signal, your LED running lights disappear and it turns into an amber turn signal. Here in the center, big, massive black grill, big black bow tire right there. Down here, you see you've got your fog lights integrated into the bumper and you've got these red tow hooks, which are actually an, an extra cost option. Also in the grill, you're gonna see a nice Z71 designation right there, nice touch. Step back from this and you can see once again, good looking aggressive looking truck coming around the rear here you're going to see your bumper has these steps you're going to want for getting into the back of this tall thing and here, here you can see your tail lights your standard level tail lights are just going to be kind of regular incandescents but you can see these are nice they've got kind of the led outlines and then you got your turn signals that light up inside of that some other optional things on this truck you do have the completely blacked out badges so here's your silverado your lt badges completely blacked out as well as these black inserts into the tailgate stamping of Chevrolet. Now the tailgate on this particular example is just a standard tailgate. It's not the optional multi-flex, multi-functional tailgate that you can get on these Silverados, which is really cool. All you've got on here is a couple of cameras for backing up and hitching up trailers and your electronic tailgate release. Push that and it just glides right down. Now this is not a power operated gate per se, it's just a power latch. So you do have to put that up by yourself. But you all don't even have to touch the tailgate to put it down. Just click your remote right here twice. And there it goes. Inside the bed, you're not gonna find a whole heck of a lot. You can see up at the top, you've got your obligatory brake light and cargo lights. You've also got cargo lights right here, one on the passenger side and one on the driver's side right here, just inside the rear of the tailgate. And below that, you have the optional 120 volt outlet. Push that up gentle. 
modern tailgates are awesome. Now this truck with its powertrain is capable of towing right around 9,000 pounds. So you do get a tow package. Here's your hitch receiver. You also have right here is your four pin and here is your seven pin connectors. And an interesting touch here, if you open this, there's a lock to keep people from being able to lower your spare tire. Now, something rather unfortunate about the outside of this truck that I noticed. Now, keep in mind, it's that this thing is capable of towing 9,000 pounds. So you may end up wanting to tow with it. However, check this out. Your driver's side mirror has a standard mirror and a little blind spot mirror up in the top, like, you know, most trucks do, especially if they're gonna tow. However, for some reason, Chevrolet decided to not put a blind spot mirror on the passenger side, which is really the side of the truck that needs a blind spot mirror the most makes zero sense to me and now let's make our way into the silverado trail boss we'll start here of course at the driver's door most of what you're going to see here is black plastic you do have kind of a nice speaker grill although it's really nothing special as far as the sound system is concerned but that's a big speaker grill i reckon there's probably at least two speakers in there a little bit of chrome trim around that you do have a little bit of white stitching kind of accenting the black you do have some soft touch material right here and right here actually a little softer right here on your armrest so it's not going to be quite as hard on your arm up above there some nice it's probably fake wood but it still looks nice it's a very nice trim here a little bit of chrome a little bit of accents there it's really not a bad looking door panel for an off-road truck looking at our door sill nothing special here just a stainless steel looking plate you do have z71 floor mats to go with this truck which is awesome those look really nice coming from that you do have fully adjustable driver's seat with some okay bolstering and not sports car bolstering but you'll fit just fine right here to the left of the wheel you're going to see unfortunately your electronic parking brake but here you got your four-wheel drive controls and of course your lighting controls for the exterior here on your steering wheel you got your controls for heated steering wheel for your adaptive cruise control for your collision avoidance system you got buttons for your phone and to control the 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster screen in front of you. We'll get to that more in depth in a minute. So now you may be looking at the steering wheel and wondering where are the audio controls? Do I have to reach over to the center and take my attention off the road for simple things like volume controls? No, just come around to the back side of the wheel and there's your audio controls. Now on this side, you got volume controls and on the driver's side of the wheel, you've got your other controls for source and whatnot. So right there, literally at the tips of your fingers, not your thumbs, for up and down volume controls. To the right of that, you got a 13.4 inch digital infotainment screen. Once again, we'll get to that in a minute. Down below that, of course, there's your power and home buttons for that system. And here's some nice piano key switches right here. Here's one of the one to turn your auto start stop off and on and off. Here's one to actually release your tailgate. So if we push that, there goes the tailgate. And of course you got your hazard light, your traction control off button and your hill descent assist. Down below all that you're going to see, here's your engine start stop button. And here's some physical climate controls for your dual zone climate control. You don't have to do anything on the screen for this climate control. You can see here in the middle of the knobs, you do have your little display telling you what temperature you're setting it at. And here's your fan speed controller right here. And you see up in the screen, it actually does give you a couple of redundant things. You can see as I adjust the fan speed that goes up and down on the screen. I hope that's not too much noise coming out of those air vents. It is toasty in here. Let's see if I push auto, it sends the fan speed up full. We're gonna drop that down because we don't need that much loud in here. You see right here off to the side, you've got heated seats for your driver and on this side for your passenger. Also just off to the right of that, you do have your USB-A and C ports as well for charging your devices. And you can see here in between the radio and climate controls, you do have some more of that nice wood trim that runs all the way to the passenger side. And over on the passenger side, you get dual glove boxes. Of course, you get this lower one here that is lockable. Open that up, decent amount of storage. But you have an upper one, and you may be wondering how you open that, because if you're just looking really quickly, you're not gonna catch where the button is. Chevrolet kinda took an idea from Ford, or maybe Ford took an idea from Chevy, I'm not really sure. But there's a button right here underneath this climate vent. Just hit that button, and you're, uh, lid there shoots upwards and that is your upper glove box now it's not huge but it does offer you a little bit of additional storage you just push that right back down and it's closed up on top of the dashboard you can see what looks like there may be a provision for an optional heads-up display we don't have one in this truck but that is right there and over here behind your infotainment screen is a little place where you can you know kind of put things kind of neat up above, there's not really much of anything to talk about. Here is your standard rear view mirror. There, it's not the uh, newfangled General Motors digital rear view mirror, which I think everything should have, but this one does not have it, unfortunately. And you use your map lights up here, just push your button and they turn both of them on, or you can turn them on individually and they kind of fade on 
and then fade off, which is kind of neat. That's more of a luxury car touch, and it's in this truck. Fade on, fade off. Also up here at the ceiling, you're going to flip down these visors, and each side does get a mirror, which, of course, is kind of a car thing now. Unfortunately, neither one of them are lit. Okay, so after a brief bit of research in the truck's owner's manual, I have figured out that yes, these can be optioned with a heads-up display, which most Chevy trucks can. However, this truck is not equipped with that, so instead what you get is a series of red lights here to correspond with your forward collision warning. So you see if I start the truck up, they're going to light up, and they're going to kind of test themselves out as the truck starts up. You're going to see there's six of them, and with your heads-up display, normally it'll just put a little image up in the display if you're about to hit, or if it thinks you're about to hit something. In this case, it just uses those red lights and the series of beeps. All right, if I move my phone and my monster, we can take a look at the center console in this truck. Now, like I said a minute ago, this truck seats six people, and if you're unfamiliar with these trucks, you're going to wonder, how, what am I talking about? Well, I'll show you in a second. First of all, here's the center console in the center console mode, if you will. So you get a little bit of storage right here, dual cup holders, a couple more little storage pockets here, one up on top, which is perfect size for a cell phone. Open this up, and you do get a decent little storage compartment in here. It's not as deep as most, but it's there, and you can store some things in it. Close that down, and then pull up right here. And there is your center seat. And what's neat is you can lift the seat itself up, the seat bottom, for even more console storage underneath. So you get storage and you get three wide seating in the front. And when you're ready to do away with that seat, just pull this loop right here, kind of violently I might add, and it folds right back down to your console. All right, climbing into the rear of the Trail Boss Silverado, and we can see there is plenty of room so this seat is adjusted to me i'm just a hair over six feet tall this thing is set up for me to comfortably drive the truck and there is a ton of leg room in this truck and that's what i love about these modern crew cab trucks is you just get a ton of space in these things great headroom of course because it is a full-size truck three wide again you got a 60 40 split back here there's a lot of room in the back of this truck i really do enjoy that okay looking at the rear more in depth you do have pretty much the same door panel except made for the back door same nice looking speaker grill same good accented trim with that wood grain trim in there looking at the floor you do have a nice matching floor mat to match the front it is carpet underneath as you can see but it's a nice all the way across floor mat looks really nice it's going to really help protect your carpet you do have a mat pocket on the back of both seats not just one and down here underneath the center console slash uh, middle front seat, you do have some climate vents, although no climate controls, you are still at the mercy of the people up front, but you do have a 120 volt household type outlet here, as well as a type A and type C USB port. Here you have your 60, 40 split rear bench seat. And you see, if you pick that up, you do get more floor storage. So if you need to get some big items in the back that you don't want out in the weather, or you just want to be able to lock them in the truck, you got the space right here. Unfortunately, one thing I'm not seeing in the back of this truck is the ability to fold down the middle seat to get a armrest slash cup holders. So no cup holders in the back of this truck. You're going to have to use the spots in the door. While I'm back here, one thing I'm actually very disappointed to see is the lack of a sliding rear window. Most trucks, even in quad cap form, have a power sliding rear window. This one doesn't. That's a very pickup thing that this pickup does not have. All right, back to the driver's seat to check out this digital gauge cluster screen. 12.3 inches. Start the truck and watch it come to life. And you can see, once again, this is a fully digital gauge cluster screen. And it's actually pretty configurable. So the way it's sitting right now, you do have your speedometer on the left, tack on the right, and you get information in the left, right, and center, as well as the bottom. Now on this info page that's sitting on right now, you see I've got my digital speed. If I keep scrolling, I get some different types of driving summaries as far as MPGs, trip meters, that kind of thing. And you can see here right, right now, it looks like on both these trip meters, it's averaging right around 16 and a half miles per gallon. You get your tire pressure monitor. Of course, you can also have that in one of the side displays, as you can see on the left there. Fuel economy, driver assistance, screen, oil life, brake pad life, air filter life, which is interesting. Jump over here to this page, you get what's it, whatever's playing on your radio. Right here, of course, is your compass, your navigation. Over there's your phone and here's your setting screen. And here's where you can start configuring your gauge cluster screen. So if we hit display layout, you got classic, which is how this looks now. If we go to progressive, it's gonna change. And these transitions do happen rather slowly in comparison to most other gauge cluster screens. You see, here's a progressive. Your speedometer is only like a half circle kind of thing, kind of more shaped to this cluster screen. And there's your tacker over there on the right. You can see it as I rev moving up and down, which it looks really good. We go over here to digital, 
let that change. And now I don't have a tachometer, which is interesting, but I just get a digital speed up there and my information off to the sides and the bottom with no gauges on either side. Go over here to clean, let it transition. And now all you're gonna get is your speed limit, your lane keep deal up here, up here, a big digital speed display, and of course your information display over here in the center. Let's put this thing on uh, progressive. I kind of want like the way that looks. Now if we back out of that and go to left side info, this is gonna allow you to choose what you see on the left side of the screen. So you can see as I scroll, it changes what I see on the left side. If I back out of that, right side info, now I get to choose what I see on the right side of the screen. Lower gauges, if you can see right now the way it's set up, if I hit my lower gauges, it's on maximum. So I've got pretty much everything. I got oil pressure, battery voltage, gas gauge, and temp gauge in that order from right to left. I can scroll down to medium, say I want less. Now I'm just gonna get my temp gauge and my fuel gauge, as well as my fuel range. Minimum, all it's gonna give me is my fuel range is gonna move the Prindle down from above in the right side display down below, and it's gonna put my overall mileage over there. See so if I go back up to medium, I'm gonna put that Prindle back up there underneath that drive mode display. Let's go to maximum because I do like having all of my gauge information right there in front of me. Now this again is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster screen. Your lower trims, your base are just gonna have regular analog gauges. Now it's gonna have a full set of six gauges. It's gonna show you everything you'd ever want to know or ever need to know, I should say, but it's not as cool as getting the upgraded digital screen. Now I showed you a minute ago down to the left of the steering wheel, you do have these four wheel drive controls. You also have your mode switch and here's a button for tow haul, you can turn that on and off. So as you can see right now, I'm in normal mode. If I click that to the right, it's gonna put me into off-road mode, which also changes the display up a little bit. Turn it again, it's gonna go back to normal. It only has two modes. Now if you push tow haul, it's gonna set it up better for towing trailers. You can see it actually puts a little trailer behind the truck in the image, kinda cool. That's also gonna show me, see if I, if I put it into four wheel drive, it's gonna change over there on the right to show that, I'm putting, that I have the truck in four wheel drive. Uh, uh, put, it back, put it in auto and it's gonna decide what it wants to do, put it back in too high, and it's just gonna go back to too high. And it's gonna show all that right there in that side of the screen. I kinda of like having that there. I also love that the picture displayed is a Trail Boss with red tow hooks and not just a generic Chevy truck or just a truck. It's, that's, that's a nice touch, I like that. Now over here to the right is the other screen, the 13.4 inch digital infotainment screen. This is of course the optional screen. Your base models are gonna get something a bit smaller and with a few less features. Now this system does come like most vehicles do with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but the upgraded system also just has Google baked in. So we have Google Maps right here. We're gonna push on that. And of course you're gonna to have to subscribe to it, but you know, it still offers the Google Maps, which is pretty awesome. Uh, let's go over here, push the home button. Take us back to where we were. You get Google Assistant, you got the Play Store. Push this audio button right here and you got all your different sources, AM, FM, Sirius XM, podcasts, Bluetooth, all that good stuff. Back out of that, hit cameras, and it's gonna show you the rear view camera. Now, I believe these trucks can most likely be offered with a front view camera, although this one does not have it. But here's your rear view camera. Here's your rear view camera, which you can keep up there all the time if you want, and the trajectory lines turn with the wheel, nice touch. Tap this right here, and you're gonna get just one straight line to aid you in lining up a trailer. We can close out of that. And of course, if I throw it into reverse, I'm gonna get all that same stuff again. See, I can put it back over here and I get my lines. So you can either have that in reverse or you can have it just displayed all the time. Now, if we look again real quick, this is a decent camera. It's not the best of the best, the especially for far off objects like these cars in the distance, it is kind of grainy. So it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it could certainly be worse, that's that's for sure. Um, back to the home screen, if we swipe over here, we're gonna get a few more things. You hit this button right here, and this is how you can use the truck to test the trailer lights. It'll run through a whole sequence all by itself, which is hit climate here. You're gonna get a few redundant climate controls, of course, your AC controls, your synchronization, your fan speed. You turn that up and down on the screen. Obviously, it's easier just to use the physical controls, but if for some reason you do want to use the on-screen stuff, you can as well. You can, of course, change your temperature here, and you can redirect where the air is going, defrost, upper, lower, whatever. Back to home and to the settings screen. Now, I will say one thing. It does take a minute when you tap an option for it to load that option up, which is a little bit eh for 2023, but it is what it is. It's not a high-end vehicle. It's a Chevy truck. Going to vehicle settings, you get all kinds of stuff. Here's your teen driver setting. That's nice, so if you're going to loan your expensive pickup truck to a teen driver, you can set all kinds of different restrictions, which I'm sure you use a pin to activate. Rear seat reminder, so you don't leave your kids, pets, or valuables back there. 
buckle to drive. This is a this this is already annoyed me. I'm going to turn that off because just to move it around the lot, it has wanted me to buckle my seatbelt to pull it out of park, and that's yeah, I don't like that. If we tap on climate and air quality. You're going to have options for your auto heated seats, auto defog, all that good stuff. Collision detection systems, of course, automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, nice to have in a big truck like this. Comfort and convenience, here's your chime volume. You can tell it how loud you want it to chime on. It's not going to give me an example chime every time I click it. That's a shame. Back to our home screen, you can see it does offer a Wi-Fi hotspot. So if you subscribe to that, you get 4G internet in your truck, which is awesome. My Chevrolet Google News, and once again, a button for podcast. Off to the side, you're going to see a few quick options. you got your Google Assistant and your maps, of course. Hit this trailer button. It's a quick way to get to your trailer light test. Hit this button here. It's going to be for your cell phone if you got one paired. Hit this one here. Here's your music. And this one here is back to your home screen. So a few handy side controls over there. Off to the right side, you can see there's another side panel. So you can display a couple of things at once. Google Maps, which you have to be subscribed to, or just connect to Android Auto. Of course, here's this will show what music you got going, and you get an analog clock in digital form. Hey, folks, we'll get back to the review in just a second, but if you like what you're seeing so far and you want to see what else I've got going on, on the channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel. When you get done watching this video, go check out the rest of what I got, and if you like what you see, give me a like and subscribe, and uh, make sure to turn the notifications on. Follow on social media, Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel, so you'll know when videos go up. All right, back to the review. All right, haters, now we're going to move under the hood for the uh, the business end of this truck and the part that most people are going to say, what the heck? Now, like I said a minute ago, your Silverados can be optioned with either a 5.3 liter V8, a 6.2 liter V8, a Duramax diesel, or this, the 2.7 liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder. Hey, this engine produces 310 horsepower, which funny enough is the exact same number as the EcoBoost Mustang, and 430 pound-feet of torque. And that torque actually comes in at a very low RPM, right around 1,500 to 2,000 RPM on this thing. So this is actually a very torquey engine, which from what I've seen in the research that I did in preparation for this video, makes this actually a pretty peppy truck for being a massive truck with a four-cylinder engine. Now. I would like to assume, and I'd say I'm probably not entirely wrong, that the reason that the Silverado has a 2.7 liter four-cylinder engine is for fuel economy. Um, this thing is not going to get amazing fuel economy. The number, there's plenty of reviews online that tell you, that prove that it's not going to get amazing fuel economy. We're talking anywhere from 16 to 21, depending on your driving conditions. Uh, Chevrolet's website reported this thing at about 16, 17, 18 miles per gallon. And you saw the average of 16 on the screen right there in the truck. And some of the um, sources I found online during research proved it's about 16 to 18 MPG. So for an engine that's supposedly put in this truck for fuel economy, instead of being made into Chevrolet's 10-speed automatic transmission, the one with multiple overdrive gears, this is made into an 8-speed automatic transmission, which is baffling. I'm sure they had their reasons. I'm no engineer, so I'm not going to assume to know what those reasons were however personally it blows my mind that they went with an eight speed instead of a 10 speed with multiple overdrive gears to get the optimum fuel economy now as far as this truck's ability to do truck stuff which of course would include pulling carrying and off-roading your in-bed payload for this thing is right around 2200 pounds ish max tow right around the 9000 pound in that neighborhood so yeah you can do a decent amount of stuff with this thing although I'm going to channel my inner Scotty Kilmer here. A turbocharged four-cylinder engine pulling this massive truck around plus 9,000 pounds. How long is that engine going to last? Who knows? It might last forever. It may last no time at all. Who knows? I'm sure we'll see eventually how that goes. As far as off-roading capability, obviously, once again, this thing does have the Rancho shocks on it from the factory and the factory two-inch lift over your standard four-wheel drive Silverado, giving it about 10.9 inches of ground clearance, and it comes with those factory off-road tires. So... That's what this thing's really built for, is going off-road. That's why they called it the Trail Boss. But you can still do some truck stuff with this thing. Now, as far as Trail Boss pricing, according to Chevrolet's website for 2023, your base custom Trail Boss is gonna start you right around $54,000. Now, this one, the nice LT, is gonna start you right around 62, 63-ish. So, they're definitely not giving these things away. All right, so there's your full tour of the uh, Trail Boss 2.7. Now let's get this thing on the road and uh, let's see how this little engine actually performs in this. 
big old truck. All right, I know it's not a V8, but just for fun, let's see what this four cylinder sounds like when I start it up and rev it. I have a feeling it's gonna sound a lot like turbo. All right, so just from the beginning, I do notice that, man, you can I mean, you can really get this thing to go. A lot of people online are saying, yeah, this is a peppy engine. I mean, the torque comes on early and you can really get this thing moving without very much throttle at all. But if you do want to give it some throttle, you just bury it, wait for the turbo lag, and it will go. Now, it's not going to put you back in the seat. It's nowhere close to that level of power, but it will get up and go. I did watch one reviewer who timed the zero to 60 to right around the eight and a half to high eights. So it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's under 10 seconds to 60 in a big, like 5,000 pound plus truck powered by a four cylinder. So not bad. Before we really get out on the highway, just what it's like driving this thing in general. One thing is you're definitely hearing that engine and mostly what you're hearing is turbo. I mean, you can really hear the turbo whine in this thing and we'll get it on the highway soon. And hopefully you'll be able to hear that. Um, as far as visibility, it, it's a full-size truck, so you've got decent visibility out the back window. Your side view mirrors are decently sized, although once again, I'm very disappointed by the lack of a blind spot mirror on the passenger side of the truck. Over the hood with that extra bulge, it's very bulbous. It's a huge nose out there in front of you. And a term that apparently I really like to use when reviewing modern trucks is it's a, you get a very commanding view over the road. You're sitting pretty high up, especially with the additional lift. You got this big nose in front of you. You really do feel like you can just run over just about anything looking out over the hood of this truck. Now, another thing I'm noticing is some, definitely some tire noise. Those Goodyear Wrangler tires that are on this thing, they do make some road noise. It's not insane, but it is there. You can tell it's there, but it's not terrible. As far as getting this thing up to highway speed, not a problem at all, even with the four cylinder. 310 horsepower, it's not a lot, especially for, I mean, it's decent for a truck like this. Obviously the EcoBoost Mustang has the exact same amount of power as far as horsepower is concerned and making it faster, but that's a sports car. But this is an impressively peppy truck. If you bury it, wait for a second of that turbo to kick in and it will, it will accelerate. Now you do hear that turbo whine. I don't know if you heard that turbo whining or not, but I definitely heard it. Brakes in this thing are all right. They're not too touchy, but they're not too soft either. And this truck only has about 4,300 miles on it, so I don't imagine the brakes are worn that bad. As far as comfort is concerned, once again, it's not a luxury vehicle, and these are cloth seats, which in the summertime is probably a much nicer thing to have, but it's decently comfortable in here. I got plenty of space, headroom, legroom. I'm not cramped at all in this truck. It really feels nice. The armrests are in the right place. Now, this armrest is a little low for me, so I'm up here on the door, on the, uh, windowsill which is not a problem it's where i rest my arm and everything but this armrest right here is actually nicely placed so if you're a driver and you're aiming for comfort and cup holders you're probably only going to use this as a five passenger vehicle which is probably how most people are going to do it but if you do need this extra center seat you do have it which once again nice feature looking around as i drive for an off-road truck that's you know not the highest trim level of, of Chevrolet you can get. It's also, you know, it's not on the level of like a 1794 Tundra or a King Ranch F-150 or even a high country Silverado, but it's still really pretty nice in here. You got that nice little wood trim accent and not too much chrome accents in here, but it's not entirely black, which is a really nice thing. If it was nothing but black, I'd be, man, this is just boring. This, this 13.4 inch digital infotainment screen is really nice it's very clear um, if you're going to swipe across it is pretty responsive like i said when you're opening menus and stuff it takes a, se a couple of a second or two but as far as just swiping around it's pretty responsive and everything's big easy to read it's right there in front of you in easy reach this digital gauge cluster screen i also like it it actually provides a lot of great information i can choose whatever i want to see on this thing it's very configurable i do like this thing i would definitely pay the price um, to have this equipment added to the truck because it, it it feels very modern. Your base truck feels a little old, you know, with just the plain black analog gauges, whereas this, it feels like a 22, 23 model vehicle. And once we get through the red light section of this highway, we'll really see what this thing does. Now, while I'm out here just cruising on the highway right now, about 60 miles an hour, I do want to note that the suspension in this thing, being 
an off-road spec vehicle. It's going to have a slightly softer suspension for that suspension tra added suspension travel. However, it's not the most supple thing. Of course, it's a truck, so it's not as rough as you would think a truck to be, but it could certainly be softer. You're going to feel some things in this, but it's not too bad. I think it's pretty comfortable. I could definitely road trip in this vehicle. Let's get off somewhere where I can uh, do a pull or two and see what this thing is really all about. Like I said, a YouTuber I watched earlier while doing my research for this truck timed an 8.5, 8.8, something in that range on their draggy. I don't have any kind of um, equipment like that to you know, do a really good test of that caliber, but I can do a seat of the pants test. All right, we're at a complete stop here. We're going to see how this thing does. We're sitting here right now at zero miles an hour, rear wheel drive. Like I said, I don't have testing equipment to test zero to 60, but we're just going to do a seat of the pants test and see what it feels like. The guy I watched timed it to, right, to the upper eight second range, so let's just see what it feels like from zero miles an hour and go. So it takes a minute to, for that, it takes a second for that turbo to kick in and then it starts taking off and that's 60 right there. So I'll go back and time that with a stopwatch when I review the footage and uh, I'll post the time up on the screen for you. But even though it's close to nine seconds, zero to 60, it still feels nice. And it's still something, a truck that despite its weight and engine size is not gonna have a problem getting up to speed on the highway. Now I wanna talk a little bit about my opinions when it comes to towing with this truck, because the same YouTuber that did the zero to 60 test, he actually te did a series of tests in a truck just like this one. Um, and I'll go ahead and put his, uh, the name of his channel on the screen right now. He has no idea who I am or that I'm even doing this, but I really liked his testing and I think you might really like it too if you go and check it out. He actually hitched up a trailer to this thing of about 9,000 pounds. He really did some thorough testing in one of these trucks. And from what he would describe, Here's how I think I would tow with this truck. I would definitely, as far as towing is concerned, treat it more like a mid-sized truck. You get that, you get that 9,000, you're really maxing everything out and you're probably, once again, not to sound too much like Scotty Kilmer here, but you're definitely putting a strain on that turbo four cylinder engine. Obviously this truck is not for everybody. Now with a big V8, it's for many, many more people, but I don't think the two seven is for everybody. And it's certainly not for me. The, that zero to 60 felt okay, but it was missing a very important thing. And that would be the rumble of a big V8 engine. But I think most people are gonna opt for a V8. The type of people that I think are gonna want this truck are the ones that are gonna want the, the size and comfort and cargo capacity of a full size truck. You can get this thing in a standard or, or short bed configuration, uh, anywhere from like 64 to 79 inch bed. I think the type of people that are, are going to have this truck going to be the ones they want a full-size truck they want the space they want the comfort you know the possible added safety of being in a larger vehicle but they're not going to be they're not going to be towing a lot of stuff they want to carry their their kids in it but they don't want a little or mid-sized truck to do that with so they don't really need a v8 engine that's my opinion now me as a car enthusiast i'm not going to want this truck it's the four cylinder is just too small it's got plenty of power, but it doesn't have that V8 rumble that car guys love. Obviously the V8's gonna have more horsepower, although ironically less torque, I think in the 5.3, but still this truck wouldn't be for me. I'm impressed by the power that this four cylinder delivers. I'm impressed by the acceleration and it is a very nice truck, but I would definitely opt it with a V8 as a car guy. However, if all you want is a full size truck, but you don't want the terrible gas mileage of a V8, this might be your thing, but you may want to stay out of the turbo because you're still going to decrease that gas mileage. Like I said earlier, you saw that average of 16 MPG on the screen, and that's right around the neighborhood of where this thing is rated. Now, we'll say despite the size of the massive nose on this thing, even on smaller roads like what I'm on now, this thing's not intimidating whatsoever to drive, especially if you've driven full-size trucks before. It's not a big deal at all. I definitely like this thing. I'd like it better with a V8, but I do like this truck. I could try to talk about, you know, reliability of this 2.7, um, and I've heard that there could possibly be some things that pop up at high mileage. But as a new truck with low mileage, you know, and if you're the kind of person that doesn't keep their vehicles for many, many, many years, this may be definitely something you'd like to you'd like to have.
if you don't care about the V8. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for the 2022-23 Chevy Silverado Z71 Trail Boss with the 2.7 liter turbo four cylinder. This really is a neat truck. I love the styling of this thing. I love the Trail Boss being the factory lifted off-road version. It's got nice, you know, the good looking off-road tires, the stance, it's a good looking truck. Would it be better with V8? Everything is better with a V8, especially coming from a car enthusiast. But that 2.7 liter engine, it is a decently powerful motor. It is still a peppy truck and it does have some off-road and carrying capabilities. Although you're not gonna get nearly the reliability or the capabilities of a V8 truck, which should go without saying. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I hope it was informative. And if you've been eyeing one of these and saying, I could possibly try a four cylinder, but I don't know. I hope this helped you to uh, make a decision or at least get closer to one. Once again, special thanks to Twin City Certified of Maryville, Tennessee for allowing me to use this truck for today's review. Once you get done here, make sure to check the description below for a link to their website. You're going to check out this truck and the rest of their inventory. These are amazing people, so uh, definitely send them some business. Also, you make sure you like and share the video. Subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, and go check out the rest of what I've got. Follow on Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel. It's a great, always a great way to know when new videos are coming out, even if I don't post much of anything else, which I don't, unfortunately. Anyways, once again, thanks you guys so much for watching, and uh, you have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.